So we could easily do that in Estonian. I'm from Estonia as well, but let's do it in uh, English. Sure. Okay. Maybe so we have a bigger audience then. <laughs> yes. So um, I was listening to your speech, and um, I want to ask you this question. So you, you started up in Estonia. You basically took over the whole world, and then you, you kept all the development still in Estonia. So can you explain this again? Yes, yeah, sure. So hello, everybody who tuned in live here or who are watching this uh, via the um, internet or online. Um, yes, we at Fortumo, we do mobile payments. We may help developers make money with mobile operator billing in 80 countries, in Europe, in Asia, Latin America, Middle East, Africa, you know, everywhere. And um, we have four offices in San Francisco, Beijing, and in India, Mumbai. Uh, but the biggest office, all of our development, all of most of our management, uh, and uh, most of our 100 people are based in Tartu, Estonia. And I think um, for us, uh, it is very convenient and very good for a number of reasons. Uh, one being that, I uh, mean, uh, first of all, Estonia is so small country that whenever you are developing something out of Estonia, you need to make it sure that it's all international right from the beginning. Had we started in some bigger market, then we might not have reached further than our home market. But the fact that we started in such a small market has tremendously helped us uh, in being more international and making our solutions more international. Okay, and then you said um, that uh, two th 2002, uh, Mobi, and you said you were inspired by these first mobile phones and you saw four yes. lines of text and uh, but that is not mobile payment so what did actually Mobi do then? Um, we started out the Mobi Solutions, the parent company of Fortuma. We founded it as students of Tartu University in the year 2000 and uh, the idea of Mobi was to do everything related to mobile services, text messaging based services, mobile voting, mobile marketing, and for two months started as one of the products of Mobi Solutions. And in uh, 2007, we realized that uh, this product, this payment product, can actually have a much wider appeal because mobile payments are especially important in regions where the least number of people have credit cards, where the least number of people have bank accounts. And that's where we saw this going in the long term that we need to be present in those markets where. Uh, we call them emerging markets, where people often have no other way to pay other than mobile phones. So can we say that like, it took five years to find a focus? Or like you, were do you say that you were doing very different things uh, from 2002 and 2007, and then, and then you realized that it, like it's the payments? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, we were students, the second year students at the university when we started the first company in 2000. We had no idea how to build a company, we knew, we knew nothing. We just had a wish, wish to do something interesting and something fun. And for us, it was really a learning process. We was realized that in 2001, that, that, that been after the dot-com boom, there was no capital available for students who just wanted to do their first company, who had no experience. So we couldn't attract any financing back then, and we had to bootstrap all on our own. So the founders worked uh, two years without getting any salary. Then we started paying ourselves salaries, um, and it took almost four years for us to become profitable on that bootstrapping model. Uh, but for us, it was great because we were students at the same time, and we took that as a fun learning experience. And if we had failed, then uh, it would have been much better education than any university could have given us. 2007, if I'm correct, then this is the year when I first iPhone came out, right? The first iPhone came out 2007, uh, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Do, do you think it somehow uh, had something to do with you going into mobile payments, thinking like, oh, wow, iPhone, awesome, or not, not really? It's all in a way related, I guess. I mean, we were in mobile payments before that. But what the iPhone really did uh, was really that it um, activated this developer community and all those people and companies who would previously make um, games and apps primarily for the desktop and for the regular internet. And iPhone really ignited this whole this app community. 
that has spread out so so much more from uh, from iPhone now. I mean, obviously, Android is much bigger than um, than iPhone, and then there are all those other platforms where people are now starting to make uh, you know apps for. So I think that was how you know, this definitely has contributed to our business. Okay, so let's fly to Brazil now. Uh, I'm asking it because we did our own slush in Brazil just a few weeks ago, and um, it was very different and interesting. So tell us about entering Brazil. Like, any burdens there? I mean, the, the payments, are, in my opinion, are very, it takes a long time there. Mm -hmm. So how do you position yourself in Brazil? Yeah, I mean, we are, our payments are especially relevant in countries where there is the biggest gap between credit card a number of credit card users and number of mobile users. So in Brazil, there are only um, 60 million credit cards or bank accounts, but 260 million mobile phones. So for us, it was a very, very important market. Um, for us to enter into any market, we really need to make uh, good uh, deals and good, have good relationship with mobile operators. So we need to, in Latin America, we need to do deals with Telefonica, America Mobile and all those mobile operators. Uh, so that um, we can really you know, offer their building capabilities to developers all over the world. And we at Fortum, we can work with the smallest developers. So anybody in Estonia or Finland who has a cool app or game, he could go to our website, sign up and start making money from Brazil because it's so automatic and so, um, so, so seamless process. What about China? It's a whole different world. China is a very... I mean, obviously, it's the world's largest market. Um, and it's also the world's largest smartphone market. So the number of smartphones, mostly Android phones, in China is much bigger than the number of phones in US or any other place in the world. So China is really, really interesting for us, but it's also very tough. So now we have actually our biggest uh, local team in any country, we have that in, in China with uh, 10 people already and growing very fast. Okay, and now we fly all the way back to Estonia. <laughs> so, what has been your contribution to Estonian startup scene? I think it's uh, really, really, you know, booming. Uh, it's, it's, like already said, it's a very good place to make your own startup. And the people in Estonia, they have experience at working with you know, some big companies like Skype, but also they are very startup minded. They want to do their own startup or work at startup. And I think that's really you know, the reason why Estonia is booming. And then we have those startup events that are very you know, vibrant, like Garage 48, where everybody could um, come in for a weekend, they could come in Friday evening, and uh, they would have the first prototype or first product uh, available by Sunday evening. So that um, really, you know, events like this contribute to the uh, startup mentality that you don't really need, uh, you know, a big, uh, you know, investment or you don't really need to take a lot of time to make a product, but you can really often do the first prototype just over three days. And uh, so you came all the way from Estonia here to Slush. Uh, why Slush? Like, what, what, what do you expect from Slush and what you were, you were expecting from Slush, for example? Well, I mean, absolutely, Slush uh, seems to be the biggest and most interesting uh, startup event in the entire Nordic region. So, I mean, congratulations for all of you guys for making that happen. I think it's a really, really great place to meet. Uh, Startups, not only in the Nordic region, but uh, you have people here from Asia, US, Western Europe, everywhere. So we are very, very happy to be here. Okay, uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Seems we don't. Then thank you. Thank you. All right.